Good evening, and welcome to the 2021 National Honor Society induction ceremony. Tonight, our induction ceremony will be quite unlike any other previously held. With everyone's safety as an utmost priority in this time of COVID, we gather remotely for our virtual induction ceremony. The ceremony may be briefer than it has in prior years, but it is no less important. We ask that you leave your computer muted throughout the ceremony, unless it's your turn as the designated speaker. Thank you for your cooperation, your flexibility, and your understanding. I ask National Honor Society member and secretary Cheyenne Murat to read the current role of the Haverling chapter of National Honor Society. Good evening. My name is Cheyenne Murat. As President Mia Ender stated, I am current, the current secretary for our chapter of National Honor Society. The following students comprise the rest of the current members of Haverling's chapter of National Honor Society. They are Lizzie Beckin, Jesse Blodgett, Eleni Bratzman, President Mia Enders, Olivia Goodian, Hannah Hoffman, Avery Huff, Vice President Kianka Lazier, Lexi Loss, Joshua Miles, Haley Price, Maya Rusak, Abigail Spies, Caden Taggart, Sarah Towner, and Daniel Waters. Later in the program, the new pledges will be presented for induction into our society. At that point, they will join the ranks of the current members in our chapter of National Honor Society. Thank you, Cheyenne. It is now time to hear a few words about the four main char characteristics that define National Honor Society principles. They are prominently incorporated on the National Honor Society pin and insignia. They are the foundation of this organization. I would first like to invite Lexi Loss to speak about character. Character is a concept full of color. It is yellow. It is smiling and holding the door for the new kid at school, bright and easy. It is blue, showing up for football practice after a long, exhausting day because you know your team needs you, even though with every step, that nap sounds more and more appealing. It is transparent, almost gone unseen. Keyword, almost. Yet here we all are celebrating our character, celebrating you, celebrating this thing we can't really see yet the world sees in us. Right now, character is white. It has led us to a pure and precious moment as we are gathered to honor our world's future generation. But the true test is when character is black. Uh, the true test is the words we speak when our classmate receives a college acceptance letter while we are rejected from the same institution. To have character is to demonstrate selflessness. It is no secret that life will be tough, but will we choose to spend our last dime to eat the whole sandwich or give half to the homeless? Self-awareness. Will we decide to admit our mistakes or spend our energy trying to hide them? Understanding what character is is one thing, but, but to have it makes you a gift. So colorful and so very priceless. So hold that door, enjoy your moment, and continue to share your sandwich. Thank you. Thank you, Lexi. I would like to next invite Sierra Towner to speak about scholarship. Good evening. I've been selected to speak on the pillar of scholarship. Scholarship is really important to me because I'm the type of person that has always wanted to have good grades that I could get. For me, this means I, that I have to study, read over my notes, listen in class, do the homework, and also do the corrections. It's true. Whenever I would get a bad grade, I would always be upset with myself and say I could have done better. And my mom would always tell me that it's just one grade, you'll do better on the next one. See, scholarship isn't just about grades and who is doing better. However, it is also about how we get the grades we have achieved. Every person that is here tonight has been working hard academically to get where they are today. And being a part, a part of the National Honor Society shows that hard work and dedication. Thank you. Thank you, Sierra. I would next like to invite Olivia Goodian to speak about leadership. What makes a good leader? someone who takes charge in a class project, someone on student council, 
someone pitching ideas in the workplace, someone with political power, or is it just someone with that certain it factor? To me, a good leader is someone who leads with their heart and inspires others to do the same. To lead with your heart means to be passionate. Without a clear drive for achievement, nothing will get done. A strong leader knows how to inspire change regardless of the position they hold. Leadership loses meaning when one has little passion for the project. If the star soccer player loses their love of the sport, the team will suffer. A leader who lacks the devotion, dedication, and drive for a cause will not inspire the same drive in others. A strong leader values empathy and compassion inside and outside of their roles. The manager at work who rouses their employees with a passionate speech is the same person who checks in on their friends and family. Whenever I work on a school project with my peers, I take careful notice of them. Are they enjoying the work we're doing or do they look burnt out and disengaged? I make sure to modify the plan to include everyone and play to everyone's strength. Outside of the classroom, I regularly check in on my friends to offer support if they need it and lend an ear. Knowing how to relate to those you lead is essential. As a leader, your words carry a certain weight to them and understanding how actions and words can impact others is crucial. Showing deep empathy for those you lead is essential to making a difference no matter how big or small. Perhaps the most important quality of a leader is their bountiful strength. Leadership takes strength and courage. A leader must be confident in their own ability as well as the ability of their followers. To have belief in oneself takes incredible strength, for leaving the comforts of insecurity is a difficult thing to do. Leaders must have the courage to use their voice for inspiration and action, for their example is as important as their cause. Who is a leader? The president, the CEO of a large company, or a lead actor or actress? The answer is simple. Each and every one of us is a leader. The doctors fighting for others' lives, the teachers instilling values and knowledge into the next generation, our parents and guardians working hard to support us, and each of you listening. The power to lead exists within our hearts, and I have confidence that you all can utilize that potential to lead in big ways and small. Whatever you do after high school, I hope you share your passion for it. I would like to share a quote from my favorite movie, La La Land. People love what other people are passionate about. As the newest members of the National Honor Society, I congratulate you on your achievements and your perseverance throughout high school. And from the bottom of my heart, I encourage you to lead with passion, empathy, strength, and most importantly, lead with your heart. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. And finally, I would like to invite Daniel Waters to speak about service. Everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't need to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Everyone knows Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. A great speaker, teacher, and civil rights activist. We all listen to these quotes from people such as Gandhi, MLK, and Muhammad Ali with wonder if these famous people had high morals or enlightened ideals. However, we don't always have to look so far for a person of these ideas. On the day we returned from Christmas break, my first class was Ace Econ with Mr. Harrison. And after a few minutes and so many attempts by my classmates to start tangents, Lexi Loss asked the question, what do you think of raising the minimum wage? After a few minutes of economics talk, Mr. Harrison gave a rather poignant answer. I go around the town and see how others live, see people who can't buy food, can't put a roof over their family. I don't see them as unemployed, starving or homeless, but instead of people who need help, whether it be financially or socially. He calls this the Harrison test. However, I think we can all give this test a try. Maybe we don't call it the Harrison test because I don't know if he's copyrighted it and I don't want you folks to pay him anything. As many of you know, I work at McDonald's here in Bath. 
my third week, I was having a tough day. I burned myself making hash browns, had a customer spleen scream expletives at me for something far beyond my responsibility. My manager switched me to the front counter, one of the best parts of the job in my opinion, being able to see customers face to face. I had an older gentleman come in, he orders a cup of coffee, a small order of fries, and a cup of ice water. After I rang him up, I simply asked, how has your day been, sir? He seemed almost surprised by this simple question. He gave a simple reply, it's been pretty good, thanks for asking. After I handed him his order, he looked at me and asked, how has your day been? I told him the tale of how I lost a fight with a hash brown basket and got yelled at. It let a lot of steam and made my day better. The feeling of being able to talk about my situation out to someone, anyone, was such a feeling of euphoria. We all at some point are given an opportunity to view the struggles of others, whether it's a fast food employee or just walking around a town. A lot of people would just walk by these people without a second thought. However, the person who stops maybe doesn't even give anything but their time and their ear to those struggling. Those are the people that can someday change the world. Maybe not with glitz and glamour, but with simple giving. Those we help might not be able to give us back much of anything. Those who help with no need to be reimbursed, those are the ones who will change everything that we know. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. And finally, I would like to invite Haley Price to introduce tonight's keynote speaker. Tonight's guest speaker is Mr. Phil High. Mr. High grew up in the town of Tonawanda, not far from Buffalo and Niagara Falls. He attended Kenmore High School and later attended SUNY Buffalo, where he earned his bachelor's in education. Mr. High has been teaching Spanish at Haverling for 30 years, and he couldn't be happier. According to him, he's living the dream. Teaching is his calling and his first love. Mr. High has also taught driver's education for 20 years at Haverling and is proud to report that in that time, there's only been one car crash. But not to worry, everyone was able to walk away. He and his wife, Sue, are parents to four children and grandparents to three. Mr. High resides in Bath and is an avid jogger with 10 marathons under his belt, and he says he's not finished yet. He can often be seen running miles around town. Mr. High is a positive role model for students and colleagues. He is friendly and well-liked by all, students and staff alike. Tonight, we are very fortunate to have him here with us to give the 2021 National Honor Society keynote address. Welcome, Mr. High. Wow, you guys are a hard act to follow, but I'm going to try. So good evening. Uh, thank you so much, Haley, for your gracious introduction. It is such an honor to be asked to speak to you tonight. This is probably the biggest honor of my career. Uh, I was not a National Honor Society member, so I'm truly grateful to be here tonight. Uh, you've shown me a great kindness to ask me to do this. Thank you for that kindness. And as my way to thank you for being so good to me, you guys are welcome to dig into those bueno bars you got today and yesterday. I hope you enjoy those. <clears throat> to those of you who are being inducted this year, congratulations. I congratulate you on this achievement to be selected for National Honor Society. It's quite an honor. To those of you who are already members, I congratulate you for continuing to uphold those qualities that this society represents. Can I encourage all of you though, to thank the people in your life who've helped you to get to this point, to get into the National Honor Society, this point in your high school career. Your selection for National Honor Society is based on scholarship and leadership, community service, and your character. Tonight, I'd like to challenge you though, to go to the next step in character. I believe that there are things more important in life than scholarship and leadership and community service. Those things are important, but a show of love can make a big difference in someone's life. Think about the people in your life that you most respect and are thankful to have in your life. My guess is that they're people who have shown you love. When all is said and done, it doesn't matter what job they have, what kind of car they drive, 
how much money they have, where they live, what kind of clothes they wear, or how popular they are, or what they say about themselves. They may not necessarily have been the smartest person you've known or had leadership positions or even been active in community, but they showed you compassion. They were kind. They poured gracious words over you. They built you up. They came beside you to help you and even carried you through some tough times. They made you the priority. That's love. That's what we remember about these people. In today's culture, we see a lot of people crying out about injustice and inequality, but most of them are doing nothing other than crying out and making a lot of noise. They aren't doing anything constructive to remedy the injustices and inequalities. I challenge you to make a difference by showing love in the things that you do and in the things you say. After all, the Nike motto is not just talk about it or just complain about it. Leadership, scholarship, community service are, in essence, in my opinion, useless without love. When love and compassion are the motivation, others will want to follow your leadership. They will respect your scholarship and not question why you're serving in the community. In the Bible, this is written, if I can speak with many languages, for me, language means English and Spanish, but do not have love, I'm nothing more than noise. If I can tell the future and I'm really smart, and if I have so much faith that I can move mountains, but do not have love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I have to help the poor and I work my body to the bone, but don't have love, I gain nothing. The point is that without love as the motivation, these qualities are empty and shallow. One time I took my family on a vacation to a beach in Virginia. And as we were walking on the beach, we came across a spot where hundreds of minnows had been beached by the waves. And they were flipping around on the sand and some were gonna die and some were even being eaten by the birds at that time. But without saying what should be done, my young son, just four or five years old, started picking up those minnows and throwing them back into the water. In his innocence, he was doing the loving thing for those minnows. That was love in action. Let me remind you of a famous story. It's about a good Samaritan who was traveling on a road, taking a trip, and he came across another man who'd been robbed, beaten, and left for dead. And although the Samaritan recognized this injured guy as someone he was supposed to despise, he was not supposed to get along with, he was politically and culturally opposed to, the Samaritan still helped the injured man. He tended to his injuries. He paid for a place for him to stay. He paid for someone to look after him. And he made plans to return later and check on that guy. He literally stopped his travels, his journey to where he was going. So it not only cost him time, but it cost him money. This, again, was love in action. It's a lofty example. And maybe you can do something like that someday. But my guess is that a sacrifice like that, that the uh, Samaritan made, is a bit out of your reach right now. So here are some practical ways that you can show love. Start at home. This is the place where you might get the least recognition. Not that we're doing love and acts of love for the recognition, but home is a good training ground. Do the things you're asked to do, but do them better than what's expected. Do things like chores that need to be done, but do them without being asked. Many of you are driving now. What about brushing the snow off your parents' car, not just yours? How about moving the cars around so that your parents or your siblings that also drive have the easiest path out of the driveway, not you? Buy flowers for your mom or your grandma. Buy your dad his favorite candy. Right now, start paying attention to what people like. 
and try to get it for them at some random time. It doesn't have to be expensive stuff. It could be just something that you give time to, but practice putting other people first. Outside your home, do random acts of kindness. Pay for the coffee for the person behind you at Dunkin' Donuts. Text a friend and ask them to go for a walk or get together for a hot chocolate. I prefer hot chocolate, not coffee. Often we complain because we're, we always have to be the one that initiates contact with our friends. So what? Be that friend. Being the one that always initiates may change because of you. In other words, eventually they'll start contacting you too. Give someone a genuine compliment right out of the blue. <clears throat> it has to be genuine though, or it's just noise, just a loud noise. Don't force it, don't get too fancy, just do it. Early in my career, an administrator asked me, what is one thing that you want to do for your students to show them that you care? And after I answered the question, he said, then do it. The point is that no one knows of your good intentions or the love that you have for them unless you act on it. Your character will be the most important thing about you. It'll be more important than how much money you make or how smart you are or how many leadership positions you may hold or more important than any community service you can take on. These are all excellent pursuits but let love be the fuel for them. Tonight, I challenge you to excel in acts of compassion, of grace, of mercy, and of love. The Bible also says that to love is to show patience. It means to be kind. It means to not envy or brag or act arrogantly. Love builds other people up. It doesn't get angry with them. It forgives them. It's happy for their successes, and love protects another person's feelings. That's a tall order. No one can live up to that, all that stuff, but we have to try. <clears throat> when I was in my senior year of high school, there was a big change in my life. I made it my goal to try to be someone who showed love. Now, at that time, I wouldn't have been able to put it as succinctly as that, but that was essentially it. And let me tell you, I'm not there yet. I try, but it's not always easy. I'm 53 years old and I'm still learning how to love. It takes practice. It takes time, just like anything else that's worth doing. So give it time, but don't give up. Now, I challenge you to excel in love by going out and loving well. Love will improve your leadership. People will want to follow you. Love will give your smarts, your scholarship, a purpose. And love will make your community service genuine. You've shown me a great kindness tonight, a type of love in letting me speak to you tonight. Thank you so much and congratulations again. Good night. Thank you, Mr. High, for taking the time to be with us this evening and for sharing your thoughts and wisdom. It is our hope that your words will continue to resonate with each of us and guide us for years to come. I would now like to invite our Vice President, Kianka Leisure, to present the 2021 candidates for induction. President Mia Enders, I am pleased to present the following students as candidates to be inducted into the Haverling chapter of the National Honor Society. They have demonstrated great character, scholarship, leadership, and service in their school as well as their community. Furthermore, they have recently sworn the oath of the National Honor Society. In doing so, they have pledged to uphold the high purposes of the National Honor Society to which they are being elected. They promise to be true to the principles for which the National Honor Society stands. They vowed to be loyal to our school and to maintain and encourage high standards of character, scholarship, leadership, and service. The following students are 2021 candidates. Broden Baldwin, Sophia Beckin, Chloe Becker, Kobe Bonacave, Cindy Burns, Kiefer Calkins, Colin Coots, Lillian Dixon, 
Madeline Dubois, Miranda Duby, Reagan Faulkner, Sarah Fleshauer, Haley Garich, Riley Hode, Isabel Kreischer, Carmela Leisure, Tori McGlynn, Juliana Maluski, Nathan Musso, Harmony Owlet, Phoenix Perry, Bram Pompolis, Wyatt Rodburn, Andrew Rosa Bianca, Mitchell Shaw, Dominic Smith, Caden Sturmel, Alexis Wenben, Braden Yardum. Thank you, Vice President Kianka. On behalf of Haverlink's chapter of National Honor Society, it is my privilege to accept these candidates. Congratulations to our 2021 induction class. May you continue to live by the standards set forth by the National Honor Society. This concludes our ceremony. We would like to thank everyone who took part in this special night. In particular, we would like to thank our parents and families for their support. Thank you to the staff of the Haverling High School District, Mr. Wright, the National Honor Society Advisor, High School Principal, Mr. Michael Siebert, Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Joseph Rumsey, and the Haverling Board of Education. An enormous and special thank you to Mr. High for delivering the keynote address. Have a good evening, everyone. You may exit the Zoom.